Call the, um, I guess this is the public hearing of the Board of Selectmen to order. Today is uh, October 19th, 2016. If you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I always forget. No, I'll check that back. Uh, sometimes I remember to thank Victoria from East Lime High School who works our cameras. And if you're at home, you can tell whether I'm running it or if we have our volunteer in because when I'm running it, it's not right. So uh, we have a public hearing uh, this evening on the ordinance. It was properly notified in the newspaper and um, published accordingly to the statutes in the Charter of the Town, etc. So I have a few comments to make that tonight is the second night that this is the, that the Board of Selectmen will hear details of my plan to move to an independent police force. The town has had discussion about doing this for over decade for this for decades and decades, but it never have gone we've never gone this far in the planning process. For over one year I've joined the seven East Line police sergeants, our town attorney, the Connecticut Police Chief Association, and area selectmen, mayors, and police chiefs in gathering the necessary information and details to make this move. This was never rushed. My goals were made clear to all involved right from the beginning, to bring a better police force to East Line, better managed by a local chief who would be accountable and responsible to the police commission, the board of selectmen, and ultimately the citizens of this fine town. This needed to be done as close to net cost neutral as possible. That was very important. In other words, we should be able to move our police into an independent, locally managed force at relatively the same cost as we pay now to the state for the state trooper system. When the state dramatically increased the cost of the resident state trooper obligations to this town, this became an easier task to accomplish. And given the looming budget crisis the state now faces, $2 billion in cuts needed in the next two years, it's not unfathomable, unfathomable that the state will reach back into the towns once again and increase the fees. Currently, the state charges us about $212,000 a year for, the, for one resident state trooper. That includes his salary, his overtime, his, his benefits, and fringe costs like his car. The minute details were assembled and reviewed independently by a task force that I assembled. It's not required by town charter that I assemble this. I just wanted to make sure we had another set of eyes, or in this case, seven eyes, on the details. These uh, men and women were volunteers recruited from a cross-section of backgrounds. Industry, federal, state, police, military, municipal backgrounds were all included. I asked them to look for the inconsistencies, look for the mistakes, look for the things that we may have forgotten to add when we did our background check here. Uh, and ultimately, I wanted them to review the plan. Uh, their services were invaluable to me and I hope for the, to the rest of the Board of Selectmen here to build trust and confidence this is, that this is the right plan for the town. I'd like to repeat that this is not a decision to build a building. This is just to change the leadership of our force. While the police need a better, more appropriate, more professional space to work from, that's true. And that's true right at this moment. Tonight is not a debate in which we'll sh we'll sh we shall engage in that. We are not debating whether we're going to build a building or not. The move to an independent force does not require a building, does not require that we build a building, but does instill accountability in a chain of command that remains in control of our town leadership. We do need a building, uh, whether we go independent or not. We thought we talked about it about 10 years ago. It was a very expensive um, option. We had another option to go at the, at the state's um, National Guard facility here. Uh, that was an option. Behind the high school was talked about 20 something years ago. Um, someday we'll talk about a police building again. That's not what we're asking to do tonight. I will propose two changes later in the meeting to the Board of Selectmen for their consideration in the, uh, in the, in the ordinance that's been uh, proposed. The first change I'm going to suggest is to increase the members of the Police Commission from five to seven so that more people will be given the opportunity to serve and that the heavy workload that is expected with this change can be better spread throughout its members. The state allows in its, in its statute five, three, five or seven members on a police commission. 
I'm going to suggest the seven. Uh, right now, currently, it's written as five. And number two, I will suggest to the Board of Selectmen that we switch uh, the fact that the first selectman maintain a position on the commission, but not act as its chairperson. I think it's important that we connect the first selectman to the police commission, but not necessarily the chairperson. The job of the first selectman, as I've found out, is a very, very busy job. Um, it encumbers a whole lot of detail. Uh, this commission, especially the chairmanship, might be too much of a burden, and also it's been suggested it might be just too much. Um, we'll start the night with a public hearing. That's what we're in right now. I wanted to give a brief overview of where we are. There's some people here tonight that had, weren't at the previous meeting. Um, I know there's a lot of, when these things happen, a lot of myths and rumors and misinformation and truth comes out. And I wanted to make sure you at least got all that, that um, in front of you before we head into public meeting. When the Board of Selectmen vote on an ordinance, a public meeting is required by our, by our charter. And I'm most certainly encouraged by this group of leaders here. We are interested in hearing from you. But please be considerate of others. We have many people here tonight. Please keep your comments appropriately brief and succinct. I will allow all to speak at least one time before we call others back to, re, uh, to make other comments a second or third time. If you wish to make comments on other town items, other town issues, you can do so tonight, but please wait until the end of the public hearing when we'll go into a regular meeting. And we always, in our regular meeting, leave in room at the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting for public comment or delegation. So we'll start our public meeting tonight. Who would like to go? Maybe we just uh, to clarify yeah. for this evening, uh, unlike a regular board meeting or comments under delegation section at a regular board meeting, I believe the board can interact during a public hearing with the public and ask for additional information from the speaker. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so, so we won't engage in debate, but through the chair, um, we can. We can. Um, yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. So if there are questions out there that are being asked, and, and we can answer them tonight, unlike delegations, typically we don't engage in debate and, and crosstalk. So um, yes, I, we're interested in your comments as well. Uh, I saw first hand in the back. Sir, you, if you come on up and... Oh, no, we're going to have to get you on microphone. I don't need a microphone. Well, unfortunately, the people on, t on at home that are watching need to get in. This is what we do require, that you come to the microphone and give your name and your address. This is time consuming. Yes, sir. Did you give the mic to me back? I I okay. Is this the live mic? Yes. yes. My name is John Rigney. I live at 5 Windfall Lane in Niantic, in Chapman Woods, and I have a simple, solid question to ask. Give us the known factor to the best of your ability with a cost factor of seven policemen, and how are you going to raise that money? Because it's obvious there's going to be additional money, not something that's already budgeted in. Thank you. Okay. I will answer that. We're not hiring seven police officers. We have 22 police officers in this town right now. 22 police officers that are, that are sworn servants of our town, that are sworn officers, and that are paid town employees. We're requesting one more, and that would be the police chief. And in lieu of the payment of $212,000 that goes to the state for the state um, resident state trooper, We'll pay the police chief. There are other associated costs, and we'll go through that during the selectman meeting, but we think this will be a cost-neutral position. We think we can go to a police chief, pay Waterford costs for uh, using the jail about 50 to 75 times a year, um, an administrative secretary, recording secretary for the police commission meetings, like Darlene's doing tonight. We have to have a secretary. These would be FOI meetings. We think we can do that for under two hundred twelve thousand dollars. Other questions, Mark? Could I just add? Yep. I think you may have been re also referring to the commissioners. The commissioners um, that will be in this ordinance appointed are volunteer. Oh, thank They're, you. Yeah, Maybe that yeah. was the question, and I disagree. Right. Uh, just like most of the commissions in town, these these commissioners will be volunteers 
um, 100%. Um, you know, our zoning, our board of, uh, board of um, selectmen are volunteers. These folks are volunteers. They do get a stipend according to state statutes, a small, small stipend for with all the work you folks put in. But the seven commissioners will be volunteers. Thank you for clarifying that, Mr. Salerno. I may not have caught that whole question. Other comments? Questions? Mr. Drabik. John Drabik, 18 Drabik Road. I sit in the middle of the fence on this one, something I don't always do. But here we are in a public hearing where two weeks ago the first selectman already said, I'm in favor of an independent police department. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, but that puts the public at a disadvantage for getting a point across in a fair manner. You already have your mind made up. I think that's pretty lousy, it'd be just being a lousy citizen in this town. That said, everybody's out here, I think, a bit of a disadvantage. You have all the figures. We get nothing except an ordinance. And quite frankly, in the general scheme of things, it's all about dollars and cents. And we've got nothing to go on except what you tell us. And I think you should put a little more on paper and pass it around for the people before you hold a public hearing. This is something that's going to follow the sound for the rest of my life. I expect to live here for a while. I don't know about the rest of you folks. But I don't think we're being very fair to the public here. You can form all the committees you want. I don't doesn't seem like anybody was really a part of it, had even the opportunity to even hear about it till it pops up. Well, that's great, but we're down to dollars and cents again, and we're at a disadvantage. And one thing I will say, I don't want to see any appointed commissions in this town. I want it to be elected. We've got too much politics, and I'll refer to Nolan in the, in the dog and pony show that goes on over there. If somebody's lousy, they should be disposed of and let the people have that opportunity every two years. None of this, oh, well, we're going to put this person on and that person on, because it gets to be a political appointment and a big joke. The second thing, uh, in terms of cost cutting, first selectman is considered police chief. Probably a third of his title is considered chief of police. Well, we can cut a third of that right out, save some money there. In the grand scheme of things, when we're all done, I want to see more people on the ground taking care of the town. I don't want to see more administrators, more secretaries, more assistant administrators, which is where this is all going to end up. You can't walk into any other police department that has its own department and not see more people standing around getting a pension and a paycheck. Not that they're not worth it, but we just shouldn't be stepping into that if we're not getting coverage in town for the people. We all know about the drug issues. It goes on and on, burglaries left and right, and I think that's the grassroots of this whole problem. We're not addressing the problem, just the hierarchy. If the state police can get it done better, let them do it that way. You want to move independent? Fine. Give us the numbers so we have something to go on. That's about it for the time being. Thank you. I see a hand. I don't see a face. Mr. Mingo. Mr. Mingo. There you are. commend Mr. Nickerson because he read my mind. The, the model of this ordinance, and I'm not against the, the police department, I think it's something that should have happened a long time ago, but the ordinance I had a big problem with. This model that was presented before is the same model as the Water and Sewer Commission. I served on that commission for almost 40 years for five or six different selectmen. Uh, first selectman is the chairman. Deputy Selectman is the second in command. I'm not going to get into the dirty politics of what I think went wrong over the years on a water and sewer commission. I have no one air any dirty laundry. But the model that should be chosen here is the same as the Board of Education. Members of this commission should be elected. They should be free to pick their own chairman. And that's the way it should be. No appointing. Uh, members uh, at the whim now of the first selectman who doesn't like somebody, he's going to take them off the commission. And that shouldn't be. It should be up to the electors. 
We want a truly independent police department in this town is what we deserve. We don't need a political police department. I look what's happened in, for instance, North Haven, what's going on in the city of New London right now, and it's disgusting. But the police department is far too important to us to have politics involved in how they operate. Um, I even took some notes down here, but they're all pretty well dead right now. I guess I said enough. Everything has been covered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mingo. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Sergeant Babcock. Yeah, Bruce Babcock, 44 Roxbury Road, Niantic. Um, I don't think I can keep it brief or succinct as you requested, but <laughs> I got quite a few things to say. You know, my history here, I'm probably the elder statesman for the department. Um, with respect to my career, I've been employed for 33 years. I've been a sergeant for 10. My time is probably very limited. Uh, it's short right now. I've been present for the three studies recommending the formation of an organized police department. The first being in 1984, 1985, when our population was about 13,500. And presently, when it's increased over 19,000, you know, the increase has been about 40%. On any given weekend during the summer, we have 35,000 people in town. It's a small city. I think most of you know me in some capacity through my job, which also includes four years as a DARE instructor or from coaching different sports, both boys and girls in this town or at the high school. Uh, I think those that do should be confident of three things. You know, I'll do what's best for the people with whom I work. Um, I have the best <laughs> interests of this community at heart, and I wouldn't stand up here and lie or manipulate any facts, you know, to enhance my presentation. I've worked for 17 different resident troopers and resident trooper sergeants. Three of those returned at a later time for a second term. Um, as Mr. Nickerson said, uh, last year he called for a meeting with the seven sergeants of the department, requested our assistance with an evaluation of the department. The objective being the feasibility of um, organizing an independent police department. Each of us was assigned different tasks, which included preparing a realistic budget, manpower, personnel, specialized areas, building, investigations, evidence, records, equipment, training, supervision, an operational manual, and of course the communications and dispatch center. And the list goes on. Um, his operative words relative to the task were cost neutral. We heard that so many times. Um, my assignment was statistical, and Sergeant Masick and Sergeant uh, Dana Jazerski did an incredible job. They were the, uh, they spearheaded this behind the scenes. They did an incredible job. I think Mike's been at numerous meetings. Um, phenomenal. They deserve some recognition for their efforts. Talking about our personnel, we have 22 full-time sworn officers. We've got an eclectic group of people. It's a good blend of young and older, more experienced seasoned veterans. You know, we represent each age from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. We even have one in his mid-60s who's still healthy and he can do the job. 55% um, of our people live in town. 50% have college degrees, including one with a master's degree. 36% have military service. Eight of us have more than 20, and some of us, the dinosaur brigade, brigade it's, three of us have 30 years plus, so <laughs> we've been around for a while. Um, with this many people living in the community, I think the professional accountability and concern is a lot higher. You can't avoid people or the responsibility when you're shopping at the grocery store, attending school functions, sporting events, civic functions, or even pumping gas at the local gas station. You want people who live here who are invested in the community and have the best interest at heart. Uh, we have two firearms instructors, a detective unit, accident reconstructionist, three others with advanced training in accident investigation, we have, a, uh, we have two dog handlers, a Marine Patrol. Um, the majority of us have received training in comprehensive DUI enforcement, interview interrogation, and other areas of training. We have several who are certified in methods of instruction and one dedicated to the middle school teaching drug and alcohol resistance. Our detective unit, it's a two-person team. Mark Como and Gene Cavanaugh, they report directly to me. Detective Como's primary focus is felonious property crimes such as burglaries, while Detective Kavanaugh is the detective whose emphasis is investigating crimes against people, such as sex assaults, felonious assaults, child abuse, 
complaints within um, originating from our schools, juvenile problems, and cases involving senior citizens. Now, Detective Como, probably nobody knows this, but he spent thousands of dollars of his own money to attend training seminars out of state to learn how to process crime scenes, including areas such as identifying, distinguishing, and collecting latent fingerprint impressions, as well as identifying and collecting shoe print impressions, which helped him this past fall in solving burglaries. <laughs> Detective Cavanaugh is a certified forensic interviewer of child sex assault victims. She performs interviews for other police departments in southeastern Connecticut. She's a certified school resource officer in the department's liaison to the regional multidisciplinary team which investigates crimes committed against children. Over the past year, the detective unit has investigated 11 sex assaults in our town and 38 burglaries independent of what the other officers have done. One impressive stat that came out of this is that the solve rate of our burglaries is at 50% right now. The national average is 13 from 2015. That's an incredible uh, performance by the detective unit. Um, <laughs> and the quality of work has been impressive. We have a very good relationship with the state's attorney's office. And generally speaking, I think the quality of our department's investigative work is very good. And as a whole, we have a good reputation with the state's attorney's office. You know, the nature of this present system, <laughs> I could go on about this, both pro and con. The town's been blessed with several good resident troopers who are intelligent, dedicated, streetwise police officers. We've had guys like Pete Cleary back in 1984-85, Jerry Boyle, Bob Veach, Todd Lynch, and Billy Blanchett, most recently. All strong leaders with clear direction. Our current one, Jeff McDermott, is a good guy. He is a quality person of integrity. I can't say anything, but nothing but good things about him. They're invested in the community, however, We've also been assigned buffoons, for lack of a better word. Minimal, if any, input into the selection of these people, and this has been a recurring problem throughout time. I've been here 33 years. In fairness to all, most of these problems are systemic in nature. The system is no different from any large bureaucratic organization. It operates on reports being submitted in a timely fashion with minimal concern for the quality of the investigation reflected therein. That should be the emphasis, and we try to make it an emphasis here. There's limited, if any, promotion of community policing or recognition of police officers who possess a deep knowledge of the people and the community. It's a quantity of tickets, DUI arrests, and getting reports in on time, and that's the machine that runs. Um, so what you want is people who live here with the ability to prioritize the problems which need to be addressed. And as I said, we do strive to do that. Our recent history prior to Billy Blanchett's eight-year assignment, and Blanchett was a godsend, believe me, includes two unequivocal failures, and I refuted it. Personally, I refer to this as the idiocracy period in, in the town of East Line. It was a time fraught with egregious lies, malicious actions, turmoil, and a monumental amount of time dedicated to labor problems. Because of poor leadership and ineptitude, the town of East Line paid a $449,000 civil lawsuit, spent more than $150,000 in legal fees. Now, the irony of this is, it was very ironic that the person who was responsible for this debacle got promoted when he left here. I still can't figure that out, but that's what happened. Um, the composition of the board was much different with the exception, exception of Roseanne, and I've got to recognize her for her stance on the matter because she was one of the few who demonstrated wisdom and experience and wanted to apply the brakes to the whole process and wanted to study the complaint before leaping into action but she was in the minority, but I commend you for that. Um, another situation which has emerged. A few years ago, there was a complaint of a sex assault against a child who lived in town. It was assigned to the member of a state police, just a guy on the road, instead of one of our officers. The initial report consisted of three sentences which documented one telephone conversation as the content of the investigation. The case was closed 30 days later, but it was submitted in a timely fashion. Collectively, the file consisted of six sentences, and a sergeant approved and endorsed the investigation, both, both reports. At a later date, one of our officers learned of this problem, and it was addressed, reassigned, investigated thoroughly by the state. Um, and it came to a successful conclusion. You know, this is an aberration from the norm, but it's an example of problems which emerge when the investigator does not have an investment in the community or a genuine concern for what goes on. Um, 20 years ago, before we had a rank structure and a detective unit, this could have happened to us, but not now. You know, things have changed so much in the last two decades. A more recent situation developed regarding an assignment of an East Lime officer to the regional task force 
of municipal officers dedicated to investigating the trafficking of opioids in the area. During this time when heroin addiction has become an epidemic and people are dying, including people in this town, at a rapid rate. Um, we've got one officer who's administered Narcan three times. You've saved lives. And others who have done it more than once. Um, ranking members of the state police visited our first selectman and pressured him to remove our officer from that unit and reassign that person to the statewide narcotics unit instead. To his credit, Mr. Nickerson did not bend because he believed the town of Eastline would benefit more from being involved with this municipal task force. What happened was they got removed anyway because there was pressure put on the chiefs of police who were in charge of the program, so we lost that position. And that's a disservice to this community. Not one person who attended that meeting with Mr. Nickerson was a resident of the town. Their concern was control, not acting in the best interest of this community. And these are just a few examples of things that go on. And I think it's because of the nature of the system. It's a large bureaucratic process and organization. Um, the selection of a resident trooper. It could have resulted in another debacle if the first selectman had not weighed in on the matter and he lobbied for Jeff McDermott to come down here. This could have been much worse, believe me, because we were familiar with some of the other candidates. Um, fortunately, we employ enough veteran officers in this town who recognize and understand these unique problems and needs which are indigenous to our community. We demand the latitude to provide police service in the manner we deem appropriate, but it sometimes leads, leads to internal conflicts with the troop. Theoretically and methodologically, policing our town is a, effectively is different from communities which are larger or smaller or possess a different demographic, demographic composition. Now in 84 and 85, the study of our law enforcement needs recommended the formation of a police department. In retrospect, we weren't even close to being prepared for such a dramatic change then. But in 2016, the recommendation is the same, and I think now we're ready. Realistically, there will be stumbling blocks, growing pains during the transition. Uh, my intention here is not to cast dispersions, because I have friends who are members of the state police, and I believe that specialized units are second to none anywhere. However, those specialized services are available to every department in the state of Connecticut, not just resident trooper towns. I think the nuts and bolts of everyday policing is what defines a department and we can provide a better service. The critical question is whether or not we can provide the service at a comparable cost. I'll be retired soon too, and I know it's a concern of everybody here. I think if we can, and I think you'll learn through Sergeant Masick's presentation, it can be accomplished. The time for us to change, I think, is right now. That's all I have. Thank you, Sergeant Thank Babcock. You. To you and other members of the police force that are here, both active and retired, thank you for your service this town. You're many, many, you're a dinosaur, you said. Yes. Self-proclaimed. <laughs> thank you for your service, sir. Uh, would anyone else like to speak in the public hearing? Uh, yes. Is that Pat? It's Pat. Yeah. Come yes. on up, Pat. I don't. Pat Larkin, 14 Oak Hill Drive. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see, I, let's start by saying I agree with the, getting a police chief. One of the things I would like to see in the ordinance is that the police chief be required to be a resident of the town of East Lyme. And I also agree with electing the, the board of commissioners rather than appointing them. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> yes, Mr. Powers. Oh, good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Powers, uh, Four Round Rock Road, Niantic. Um, I had the, um, the pleasure, the honor of serving on this advisory board that the first selectman referenced um, earlier. Uh, but I, I want to say for the record that I, I appear before you as, um, as a resident of the town and not as a member of the advisory board, certainly. Um, however, um, I think our, our chairman, uh, Tom Gardner, did an outstanding job a couple of weeks ago explaining the benefits in the clear need to go forward with an independent police department and I certainly um, as a member of the committee heartily endorsed it and I'm here this evening as an individual uh, to repeat that uh, that I, I, I think it, it, it's, it's crystal clear to me that it, um, it's time, it's past time for the town of East Lyme to move um, into the, uh, the 21st century and ad adopt uh, what is necessary to um, uh, to put in a, a full-time police department. And one, of, one of the ways that I looked at the issue is that if we had the opportunity to have a, uh, a, a clean slate, so to speak, uh, 
what would be in the best interest of the town and the residents of, of the town of East Lyme. And uh, again, it's, 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 it's crystal clear that the, um, the choice of an independent police department versus a resident state trooper system model uh, for the town of East Lyme is, is the way to go. I mean, the, the, the town is approximately 18,000 people uh, full-time, uh, doubles or, or maybe perhaps more than that in the summertime. I, I, I can't imagine uh, that, um, that, that um, uh, thinking uh, decision makers would, would want to do anything, again, given the opportunity to start anew, anything but um, what's being suggested um, a couple of weeks ago as the, uh, from the advisory board and certainly as a result of, of, of this ordinance. So I, I would um, respectfully urge the members of the board and however uh, it has to proceed from here to move forward um, with the uh, independent police department. And if, if you needed any more uh, convincing, it certainly uh, was, was made pretty clear from an, an old friend of mine, Bruce Babcock's uh, presentation. I mean, there's, you don't get anybody better than, than Bruce, and I think he represents the town, and in particular the police department, very, very well. Uh, regarding the ordinance, um, when, I, when I sat um, in the audience last or two weeks ago um, and, uh, and, and listened to some of the comments and, and some of the suggestions as to how you might proceed, I, I was frankly a, a, a bit troubled by it because I, I, I think, uh, even believe it or not, given um, my ancient background um, and what I used to do, that, that, I, that I think it's very important to do anything we can to keep politics as far away from the police commission as possible. And how to do that, of course, is a, is a difficult decision. I, I know you had talked, and, and I may or may not be going in the direction of um, having the uh, suggested appointments come from the two town committees. And, and first of all, I would like to um, uh, agree with the first selectman's comments earlier about expanding the police commission from five uh, people to seven people. I think it only makes sense given a number of factors, including the great amount of work that needs to be done, uh, people miss meetings, et, et cetera. But I, I would suggest uh, uh, for your consideration that if you do go the route of what was discussed a couple of weeks ago and, and have these uh, appointments come from suggestions from the, the town committees, uh, and you may have to, I, I, uh, that would be um, uh, through your, your council uh, regarding minority representation, which I, I you know, I, I'm not a, I'm, I'm far from an expert on that, but, it, but if it's necessary to do that because of that, I would suggest that you consider with those two additional appointments, if they happen to be one Democrat and one Republican, that you consider in, instead of having them go through the town committee process, with all due respect to the, the two town committees, not everyone has access uh, to that as residents of the town. You don't, may not know any members of the town committees, you, you know, may not feel comfortable doing that, that you, you, you consider a, um, the idea of, of for, at the very least, taking those two additional from five to seven to additional positions and, and make it available to town residents who want to come in and on their own present themselves to the Board of Selectmen uh, with their resumes, um, why they would like to be considered as members of, the, of, of this proposed police commission, and, and then um, uh, make your decisions accordingly. I mean, this doesn't take politics out of it, I think, I don't believe, but it, but it certainly helps to, um, at least in my mind, um, address some of the, the concerns that, that, that I had. Um, the, the idea of, of electing, you know, I, I mean, politics comes into that also, so and because you typically have to go through the town committees in order to become, uh, to, to get on, um, on the, the election ballot unless you want to petition. So, so either way, there, there's politics involved, but, but again, with any appointment you make, I, I would just uh, respectfully urge you to, um, uh, to, to, to do whatever you can to appoint people who are, are not going to put politics first, but put the town, of course, um, uh, at, at the top. Um, I, I also, um, frankly, like the idea of what the first selectman uh, said earlier also about uh, not making the, uh, the first selectman typically automatically the chair of the, of the police commission. I know there's, there's been concern, and I, you know, I've listened to some of those concerns and respect those, uh, those concerns, and, and I think that would, uh, would address that subject also. So, um, got your hands full. Um, I, I know you're going to be doing what's in the best interest of, of the town, but as, as at least one resident who's lived here his entire life, 
Um, it, it's very clear to me that, especially given the outstanding officers that we have, that it's, it's, it's time and past time to move in, in this direction. Thank you. I thank, I thank you for your service on, on the task force, uh, Senator uh, Powers. Yes, Lisa. Lisa Picarazzi, 14 Oak Hill Drive. First to the police officers here, thank you very much for your service. <clears throat> to my board members, thanks for your service too. Appreciate it. So I speak as a private citizen. I'm also on the board of finance. Um, where's my friend, Mr. Drabik? So I have to echo some of John's uh, comments about, I, I, I think it would uh, be more effective to have an appointed uh, commission versus, uh, I'm sorry, an elected commission versus appointed. I know it's been stated by a few people. I think Mr. Larkin, I don't know him, but he said something about that. Um, and I, I just want to, I guess, officially go on record. I, I, I have this concern. I know you, we said it up front that this is not about a building complex, but in the back I have this voice saying, mm-hmm. I just feel like this may take on more of a a role and before we know it we're going to be looking for new infrastructure and as somebody who's trying to keep taxes down as much as possible and maintain a level of service I would ask you please to be mindful of that um, as a board of finance member we're working very hard to try to keep our taxes down I know you all know that but I do want to go on record and say that from what I'm hearing um, at first I wasn't sure about the proposal it does seem to make sense to have uh, a police commissioner in place it, when it comes to public safety the rest of us that are trying to do what's right if it's not our area of expertise I kind of feel like yeah I'm not qualified to do that and I don't want to do anything when it comes to the fire department or the police department that puts any of those guys in harm's way so putting somebody in charge who knows the business feels like the right thing to do to me I just again I would say I, I just want to be careful that if we say this is revenue neutral and we didn't really have facts and figures to look at that I, I um, I would just ask us to be considerate of that. Thanks. Thanks, you, Lisa. Um, yeah, it's it, it. You know, to clarify, revenue neutral. This is not an appropriation decision. Uh, we will live within the budget that uh, we exist in now, making the change. It's important. We're not moving to an appropriation. Not needing money to do this. Um, and and uh, will be spelled out uh, for the selectmen to have the final um, answers, if you will. And that was already available, but it wasn't presented um, in one sheet as it is tonight in front of them. Um, and I'll go over that during the, the regular meeting. Um, any other comments before we close the public hearing? Sure. William Cornelius. Um, 29 Forest Road, Niantic. Um, I've had three occasions. I've lived here in the town for nine years and had three occasions to contact the police department. Uh, one about eight years ago uh, regarding uh, an identity theft in our, in our household. <clears throat> and the last time, um, about two months ago, when I found uh, a resident locked in the foyer at Liberty Bank. Uh, all three times, and, and it was one other time, all three times I've had to go to the police chief, which in the case two months ago uh, was yourself to um, get final resolution of uh, the issue. I am, in, I am for a p independent police department with the police chief. Uh, I believe the first selectman should be the top of the food chain and he should supervise the chairman of the police commissioners. I would be for a combination elected and appointed uh, board of police commissioners because I think there's a certain amount of knowledge of the law that is required uh, in serving on the board. And um, other than that, I'm sure we, I, I know I've interacted with a lot of the policemen. <laughs> I'm sure they're well trained and they have uh, our interests at heart, but there, there are a few bad apples and I think that uh, 
perhaps a more uh, uh, professional department will help to make each and every one more professional. So. Thank you, Mr. Cornelius. It's nice to put a face to the name. Nice to see you, sir. Uh, I see a hand waving up there. Yeah, sir. Gerard Bergall, 24 Adelon Road, Niantic. I have a question here. I'm not sure we have the cart before the horse or whatever, but I didn't know that we had approved an independent police 